tired us to what will call home even if the sides of it Oh well I've had some pretty wild times in my life. Uh, could you move over a little bit? Uh, you're lying on my loose change. Oh dear me. I'm terribly sorry. The Mark II Volkswagen Polo. This might possibly be the most nostalgic car we've ever had on Tweed Jacket Reviews. But is it any good in 2019? Should you care? Why? Let's find out, shall we? Volkswagen. No skates. So welcome to the 30th episode of uh, Tweed Jacket Reviews and uh, actually our Christmas special. Today uh, we're in Dalkeith near Edinburgh um, which is um, the home territory for my usual videographer Mr Nick Franks and uh, we're driving a 1993 Volkswagen Polo Mark II G40 that's been lent to us by Ian. So thanks Ian. Fian. Merry Christmas. Why do you bother, sir? So before we get into more detail about this amazing, amazing rare hot hatch, um, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and to like this video and leave a comment below. It really helps us to make these reviews faster and to spread the love for tweed jackets everywhere around the world. The Volkswagen Polo Mark II was launched in 1981 and was heavily facelifted in 1990. This is a very late um, post facelift car and um, top of the range at the time, the G40. The engines available in a Mark II Polo facelift were a 1 litre, which only had 45 horsepower, a 1.3 with 55 horsepower, and uh, actually it was in the GT 75 horsepower. And then this, the top of the range car, which had a stonking 115 horsepower, and it definitely feels like it. There are also some diesels, but uh, as usual, we go talk about those. The trim levels available in a Mark II facelift Polo were Fox, CL, GL, Boulevard and Genesis. And then at the top of the range we had the uh, GT and this, the G40. We've titled this episode Nostalgic Tweed Jacket Reviews because when I was growing up, the Mark II Polo was one of the most important things in my family. My uncle had one, my sister's godmother had one, my father had one. I was sure when I was growing up that this was the car that I'd uh, actually have as my first car. In the end, my sister and I had a Mark III. But um, I don't normally talk much about Volkswagens on my channel, um, particularly 80s Volkswagens, but this is kind of like coming home for, uh, for me. It's just amazing. I know that this is a post-facelift G40, and it's very, very kind of fast, and it has a lot of differences between this and a, and a pre-facelift one, but it does feel very similar. My sister's godmother had a 1983 um, Polo, which was a, uh, I think a 1.1 engine, before the, um, one liter engine there was a 1.1. My father's car was um, an 87 Polo, I think it was a 1.3 CL. Um, that was after the very, very mild facelift they had an 86. And then my uncle's one was a twist special edition. It was a, I think another sort of 87, 88, that kind of time. And those cars had the most basic dashboard ever. No rev counter, two spindly little stalks, either side of the steering column at sort of funny angles, Peter control consisting of two sliders and a tiny little knob for controlling the ventilation. This car's only actually got two air vents. If you were lucky enough to have a radio that had more than one speaker, and bear in mind most Polos had a radio with just one speaker about here on the pre facelift cars, then you might even have it wired into the two speakers either side of the rear parcel shelf. 
Polos in the 1980s and early 90s were very, very basic cars. And, you know, this being a top of a range car, it has got a rev counter, but that's about it. There's no central locking in here. There's no air conditioning. There's no electric windows. There's no electric mirrors. There is, however, lots and lots of torque steer. And coming out of that roundabout, just at a very modest speed, I spun the front tires with no difficulty whatsoever. Now, bear in mind, you know, the Polos that, um, that, that were around in my youth had under half the horsepower of this car and this car only weighs 800 kilograms. It's absolutely bonkers how fast this is. So 0 to 60 in one of these is about eight seconds. It's a bit of a contrast from the sort of ones that uh, I knew were around, which was about 15 seconds maybe. And of course, you didn't know what the engine was doing because you had no rev counter. In terms of the handling, it feels pretty sweet actually. The gearbox is quite a long throw on it, but it's not too bad. No power assistance on the steering, so very, very heavy at parking speeds. And this being front-wheel drive means you kind of need to use your push-pull technique and your biceps and everything to turn it. But um, if you're going along these roads and um, you're loving corners, as I am, the suspension on this car has been marginally lowered, then it, it's absolutely brilliant. It puts a, a big smile on your face. So one of the things that you need to know if you want to own a Mark II Volkswagen Polo well, no Polo at all came with servo-assisted brakes um, until 1990 with the major facelift. And this car does have servo-assisted brakes, but they feel absolutely terrifying. They are vague and just really scary because the amount of pressure you put on them, even compared to, say, I don't know, a Mark II Ford Granada is ridiculous. The um, Gear change feels pretty positive actually, um, and that is that is quite surprising really. The, these cars rust an awful lot though, just like anything from the 80s and early 90s, so that's something to be aware of. And um, you know, there are very few of these left on existence. Ian told me earlier on that um, there are only 60 taxed facelift G60s on the road, so this is a very, very rare car indeed. Prices for one of these, well, they start at around five to six thousand pounds. This one, um, which is relatively standard, it's got standard BBS alloy wheels on it, things like that, um, you'd be looking at maybe eight to ten thousand pounds. One of the things that for me is very nostalgic about this car is the fact that the Mark II Polo my father had, he bought um, in 1990, and six months later he passed away. The car was subsequently sold because we already had a Volvo 240 and we didn't need the extra car. It was also 29 years yesterday that he passed away. For various reasons why you might want a classic car, it might just be that you saw one when you were younger and you thought it was great. Like me, maybe you wanted a classic car because you saw one in a television series which you liked and I bought my Imaginated Triumph Dolomite 200 SE because I saw the Triumph Dolomite in the first series of Professionals and I wanted one. But it could just be that you know you have a family member who used to own an old car like this and you want to recapture a memory of them because they're now no longer with you and i think in having a car like this if i were to buy one it would help me in terms of the memory of someone who's dearly beloved but um, obviously no longer with us and i can really understand why people love to drive cars that they used to see um, when they were younger, perhaps they never could afford them or they were too young. And um, for me, this is bringing back all the wonderful, wonderful memories of my father and the cars that were around in my family when I was younger. One thing you might notice in this review is just how firm the ride is. And uh, all I can say is a Mark II Polo G40 does not deal well with speed bumps. Uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> Here we are with anchor sky and us to not will call home even if the sight of it has not yet touched our eyes. Here we are and we're together, even if we are apart and we're together and we're together. Something big is happening among us. It's not as if we don't have to deal with our shortcomings. It's not as if we don't... This polo is um, interesting to drive. 
it's got about double the horsepower of any of the cars I remember from my youth and uh, it does feel like that. Um, the brakes also are um, fascinating. Anyway, let's uh, take a look at the Volkswagen Polo's more practical side now and take a look at the boot. One thing you'll notice straight away of any Mark II Polo is it's only got three doors, whether it's the bread van or this coupe version. Go up in the boot. We see inside the capacity is somewhere just over 200 litres. We've got massive wheel arch intrusion here as well. Um, one thing I will point out, and this is just a thing I remember from my youth, is these speakers in the um, actual part of this material around the boot. Um, it's good to see that Ian's actually not drilled some holes in the parcel shelf. It's amazing to find one like this, actually. So if we lift this boot carpet up, then we'll see underneath here, there is the spare wheel. It's a full-size one as well. Um, same kind of type of thing as on the lesser polos. The uh, boot floor in this one is nice and uh, not rusty as some of them are. Uh, I think some of them did come with a boot light. Um, this one doesn't seem to. Um, no other features in here though, no 12 volt socket, no bag hooks, just a very standard boot that you find in any small car in the 1980s. In the rear uh, of this G40, um, one thing you're immediately aware of is the fact that I've got no headspace at all, I'm right up against the roof. If I pull this seat back, um, I've moved Mr Frank's position forward a bit and as you can see I've really not got much room at all. Um, if it was in the correct position for him, then I'd be, I don't know, a dwarf or something. No Volkswagen Polo came as a five-door until the Mark III in 1994, and it really wasn't before time. I wouldn't want to spend a long time here at all. Um, I must have been a lot younger when I lost on the back of the Mark II Polo. This being a coupe, the, um, the rear uh, roof line is actually worse than the so-called bread van, the hatchback. Um, so we're going to work west of both worlds here really. Um, also this car is slightly lower so getting in and out is a bit tricky. Um, we've got an ashtray in the side of here though, this being a car designed in the 1980s, although you only get it on that side for some reason. Um, the seat fabric is quite nice, I really like it actually. Um, unlike the lesser models in the range, the G40 does come with trim up here. I remember the uh, CL that um, my sister's godmother had, had um, bright painted metal just here. One thing I would say is these seat belts, these get in the way massively when you're getting in and out of the car. You better watch yourself, you don't trip up. Getting into the front of this G40 reminds me a lot of something like a Ford Capri. The headroom is very limited. Um, bear in mind, I'm not very tall, I'm only 5 foot 11. But because you've got this sunroof fitted, it's a manual sunroof. I'm not going to open it because apparently it doesn't work very well. Um, they had, it's very limited space in here. It's a very narrow cabin. Um, as you can see, my hand rests nicely just there, but I'm driving along with one hand, which you probably won't want to do too much in a Polo Mark II because there's no power steering fitted to any model. There's no electric windows fitted to any model. There's no um, electric windows fitted to any model. It's a very basic car indeed. The Mark II pre-facelift cars, the heating system was just two sliders and a tiny little knob. and um, the stereo fitted to a lot of them was an AM unit that only had one speaker and um, it was just down to here, the speaker on top of it. This is a, a Mark II facelift so it's got a much more conventional dashboard with some nice rotary heater controls. But overall it's got acres of just black hard plastic. Um, it's uh, very dark in here. It's very, very Germanic. It reminds me a lot of say a Mark II Golf GTI, that's no bad thing, not a surprise really. Um, this does however have the leather dashboard with much better instruments and uh, we've got much better indicator stalks as well. In terms of visibility, the up the front is amazing. Um, you can see where the edge of the bonnet is, um, no problem at all to park, although obviously you don't get any power steering so it's a bit heavy. Um, up the back it's a little bit more limited, um, nothing like a modern car though. If you had the bread van version it'll be even easier. Um, the driving position is a little bit tricky. I do have seat height adjustments in this particular model, which does help things a little bit, but um, it's still not very comfortable really in here. I wouldn't want to do a very long journey, although the seats themselves do feel quite well supported. 
Right, I've got the secret measure documents ready. I managed to smuggle them across the border into Scotland without anybody noticing, so that's uh, obviously a plus. Let's see if we can uh, continue our good run of luck. No, not at all. Not even remotely. Well, you can just put that into the driver's door pocket. That's nice and long. Um, no side impact bars or anything in these doors, so that's not really a problem. Um, also, you notice in this car, manual windows and manual adjustment for the uh, mirrors. A lot of Mark II Polos, particularly the earlier ones, didn't even have an internal wing, uh, mirror adjuster. It was literally just put your hand out of the window and did this, which, uh, you know, is uh, a little bit old-fashioned now, but that's just the way things were. On this uh, Mark II facelift car, given this is a G40, we've actually got a rev counter. Most of the uh, Mark IIs that I remember had just a big clock in here um, and the two very spindly indicator and wiper stalks for some reason were offset against each other. I, don't, I really don't know why they were offset against each other but they were. Um, we've got a, a very small fuel gauge for some reason and a small temperature gauge and one of my favourite things about any Volkswagen of the 1980s and early 90s these tiny little LEDs, which indicate all the warning lights you'd ever need, um, bi-directional one for the indicators, um, just one for left or right, um, then the main beam, um, oil pressure, things like that, um, and um, the handbrake, which is combined with um, the um, brake warning light. Well, there's one right on the far side here, but it doesn't need to do anything, it's not marked for any reason. Why, if this is the top model of, of Volkswagen Polo Mark II, do you have an excess warning light? I don't know. This being the Mark II facelift car, um, below these very simple rotary heating controls, um, we've got a cigarette lighter, or a 12 volt socket, as you call it these days. Um, the same really kind of spindly gear lever that I remember from my childhood, although this is a five speed, a lot of um, Mark II Polos were four speed only. Um, handbrake lever feels very familiar indeed. Um, again, austere, plasticky, but reliable. The uh, steering wheel looks really nice actually. Um, the earlier cars didn't have anything as nice as this. Um, little silver accent there, no airbag obviously. Um, the very early Mark II Polos had a picture of the Wolfsburg Castle and a wolf on them, but in 86 with the very mild facelift that they had. Um, that was replaced with the VW logo. Um, that's the one I remember the most. And uh, we've got, you know, more sort of material here, this nicely trimmed, um, I suppose you call this cloth on the doors. Um, a lot of the other Mark II Polos had just bare metal along here. Um, just a very charming and wonderfully honest 1980s interior. Right then, what do I think of the Mark II Volkswagen Polo? Well, even if you haven't got a very strong nostalgic connection to the car like I have, then this car is amazing. It's so light, it's so old fashioned and so charming. But if you can actually find one, bear in mind these are quite rare, then you'll love it. But just don't expect to have lots of space if you're uh, on the portly side. Oh, dear me, terribly sorry. Calamity makes for strange be bedfellows. But why, I wonder, gentlemen, in the strength of your unity, do you disturb an old-fashioned gentleman in his retirement? Thank you for watching this episode of Tweed Jacket Reviews. My name is Joseph Lloyd. I'm an independent vehicle consultant. I find cars for people. Please uh, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to do that. Don't forget to like this video and to leave a comment below. If you wish me to source a car for you, I'd love to do that. My website is www.lloydvehicleconsulting.co.uk. Please use the contact me page on my website to get in touch. I've got a Facebook page as well. It's facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. Thank you.